What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another My Week With video. So this week I have been driving around in the 2020 Honda CRV Hybrid. And so the hybrid version of the CRV is a new addition here for 2020. And I really enjoyed it on the launch event that I went on. It was actually the last press trip I was on before COVID shut everything down. So I was excited to have one of these for a week just to see you know, what it gets in the real world as far as fuel economy uh, over a week of driving instead of just the one day of driving that I had there in Arizona whenever I was reviewing this. and. Uh, um, so, I mean, I still really love the CRV hybrid. And Cliff Notes, it's my favorite out of the three hybrid uh, crossovers in this segment currently. Um, just everything the CRV does, it just does a little bit better. Um, so, for example, I actually just about a week and a half ago had a Ford Escape hybrid for a week. And that was nice in certain areas as well. And there are a couple of things that the Escape is a little bit nicer with than this. But the driving experience of the CRV is so so much better. It is so much smoother. The escape was so um, just rough and jerky and abrupt with uh, the switch over from gas to electric and starting from a stop and stopping. Everything was not smooth in the escape. And here, everything is buttery smooth. And getting out of the escape and then getting basically right into this, it was just like so refreshing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I'm back in a smooth vehicle because you know the brakes are easy to modulate it you know whenever you're accelerating from a stop it's not jerky i mean it's amazing how that escape was just not smooth now the escape has a little bit more of a car like ride you're sitting a little bit lower in the escape but i'm assuming if you're buying an suv you want a higher seating position and the crv gives you that little bit of a higher seating position and you still have excellent visibility you know massive windshield and i just found myself really enjoying using the crv hybrid here as a daily driver and just running to the grocery store all those little things you know is where this is just so comfortable and I love the extra punch you get here too because you know with all the other shortcomings I just mentioned with the escape it also uh, has a good bit less power than this especially the torque this has almost 80 extra pound-feet of torque over the escape hybrid and you really feel that and you don't have to be some speed demon or some enthusiast to enjoy that extra power uh, because it just means that whenever you're starting from a stop you can stay in EV mode longer here in the hybrid version and it just has a little bit more punch whenever you're trying to get up and go and just do your normal driving from a you know, red light, all that kind of stuff. It's just going to be a little bit more responsive and a little bit punchier. And whenever you're trying to pass someone or something, you're going to appreciate that extra punch over what you get in the Escape, I think. Uh, at least I certainly did. And so... You know, all these things, just the smoothness of the ride, and this is also more refined too. That is another thing I have to add, because the RAV4 Hybrid is another huge competitor in this segment, and I think that you have more road noise and more wind noise in the RAV4 Hybrid than you get here in this. The whole vehicle just feels a little bit smoother with its ride, a little bit more refined with, you know, again, isolating you from everything else outside and stuff. It just all feels a little bit better in the CRV, and then other little tiny details like even the Escape Hybrid I had was a fully loaded titanium model, and the steering wheel leather did not feel as nice as the leather here, and this steering wheel does. And I mean, the CRV Hybrid isn't perfect. Like the infotainment system, I think out of the three, um, you know, vehicles here in the um, hybrid crossover segment, I think the CRV Hybrid has the worst infotainment out of all of them. Now it's not a deal breaker. But, you know, I just think that both Ford and Toyota do a better infotainment system right now than what's offered in the CRV. Sadly, Honda has a better system in the Accord, but they refuse to put it in the CRV for some reason. So you're stuck with something that's a little dated, a little slow, a little bit laggy, doesn't have a tune knob, and, uh, you know, a couple other things. But it still does have your smartphone integration, all that kind of stuff that you want. So that's why I say the infotainment isn't a deal breaker because everything else with the experience of the CRV hybrid is I think a little bit better than all the competitors enough so that I think it outweighs the lack of a you know better infotainment system here and it still isn't horrible again compared with even just a few years ago this is totally fine it has a really great sound system it's paired up too as well so you know that's the only real complaint I think with this and it still wasn't a big deal once you have all your you know presets programmed in and stuff um, you know you're not gonna have to fiddle with a tune knob anyway so you'll be fine with that I just think that this does everything so much better and I think it, and it not only is a better experience than the RAV4 and the Escape hybrids but it's also also a better experience than a regular CRV. I just had a regular CRV, the new 2021, uh, just a couple of months ago. And I had actually just had that like after I'd gotten back from my press trip in the hybrid. And I kept in that normal CRV review being like, man, I really wish I was in the hybrid the whole time. And 
and I, I still stand by that statement that this is a better CRV experience than what you get with the regular CRV because that has a CVT and a turbo engine that's a little eh. I'm not in love with the whole powertrain combo in the regular CRV. I am in love with the one here in this. I love that it's also a mechanical all-wheel drive system, a real all-wheel drive system, not just an electric motor in the back like the RAV4 has. Um, and so, you know, this is probably going to be a little bit better in the snow, I think. And so I just appreciate all that, but I just appreciate the fact that it's punchier than both of the competitors and uh, you don't have to worry about a turbo or anything in this either. You know, it still has, uh, you know, plenty of punch here with the electric motors and the uh, naturally aspirated gas engine. And like I said, it's just, you actually have more power than a regular CRV anyway. So it's not a huge amount of extra power, but since it's electric power and it's instant, um, I think this feels a good bit punchier than a regular CRV as well. And so whenever you talk about the pricing here, it seems like a no-brainer to me because uh, this is only about $1,200 more expensive than a uh, regular CRV with all-wheel drive, uh, you know, regardless of whatever trim you're talking about. It's only $1,200 extra. And not only are you going to be saving um, that kind of money just when the uh, gas savings, you know, over the long haul, you'll be saving, you know, with so much better fuel economy here on the hybrid, that'll certainly save you. But then you also get better performance for that $1,200 as well. And so honestly, I don't understand why anyone bought, from 2020 on, why anyone would buy a regular CRV. I just don't understand. I think everyone should buy the hybrid. It's just, even if you don't care about, you know, getting good fuel economy or something, it just gives you a better driving experience, more punch, um, more power, you know, just, it just, I don't know, I just think it's better in basically every single way. And even if you don't care about fuel economy, that's just a nice bonus. The fact you don't have to fill up as much. I've been driving 121 miles now, and it still says like a 300 miles of range left. So you're gonna have to fill up way less in this than in the regular CRV as well. So even if you don't care about fuel economy, just think about the fact you have to stop at the pump less. You see, save yourself time, give yourself a little bit of extra convenience here with the hybrid. Again, well worth the $1,200 upcharge for the hybrid. That's the easiest no-brainer in the car business, in my opinion. Go for the hybrid every single time, uh, regardless of what your situation is. Uh, I think this is going to be the clear winner in that regard. Now, I will say, though, if you're looking for the absolute best fuel economy in this segment, obviously, you could also get a RAV4 Prime. Those are a little bit more expensive, but it has, you know, an actual, like, 41 miles of all-electric range, and so you'll have to very rarely even use the gas engine in a RAV4 Prime. But those are very hard to come by here for the next year or two. They're going to be really rare, and uh, they're also a good bit more expensive, so it's not a fair comparison with this. But whenever you compare this with, uh, you know, the regular RAV4 hi Hybrid and also um, the Escape Hybrid, the Escape Hybrid is the winner as far as fuel economy goes and in my week of driving with the escape i did get 40 mpg which is the combined rating for the escape now in this i've been driving again 122 miles now my average fuel economy has been 37.7 mpg and very similar driving which means mostly suburban back road stuff a little bit of stop and go a little bit of highway and so you know i am you know about 2 mpg less than what i was getting in the escape but uh, that just proves that this is sticking by its EPA ratings. It's uh, rated at 38 MPG combined. And so, you know, right there on the window sticker, you can see this is gonna get two MPG less than the Escape Hybrid. Is two MPG worth sacrificing 80 extra pound-feet of torque for? I don't think so. That's why I think it's a very minor price to pay for that extra power, the extra refinement, the better driving experience of the CRV Hybrid. I think I would give up the slight edge and fuel economy that the Escape has for all the advantages you get here in the CRV Hybrid. So that's just my opinion, but I think you know it obviously is going to come down to what your priorities are and what you know you actually want out of your uh, you know hybrid crossover. But uh, personally, I think this would be my pick all day long and it's also a really good value too because um, although the escape hybrid is like I think $200 or so cheaper than this whenever you compare a fully loaded version of that versus a fully loaded version of this uh, and the, there is some give and take like the escape does give you a panoramic moonroof which you can't get in this no matter how much you pay but the escape hybrid doesn't give you a wireless charging pad which you do get in this so you know it just depends on that kind of stuff as well um, but when you compare it to a RAV4 hybrid this is about two thousand dollars cheaper and you actually get a few nicer things here in this like the even when you do pay two grand more for the RAV4 hybrid with a similar trim you still are getting smaller wheels than the 19s you get here on the touring hybrid you're going to get uh, soft hex uh, leather like seat material instead of real leather you get here in the CRV you don't get a power passenger seat in the RAV4 hybrid either even in the top trim that is something you get here in the CRV um, and then there's one or two other little advantages that this has as well and so um, 
you know, again, that all comes down to what stuff you care about, but the fact that you're paying more for the RAV4, you don't really get a huge jump in fuel economy. The RAV4 hybrid is slightly better, but you're talking one MPG here and there. Um, you know, I don't think that's worth paying two grand extra for. And again, you have a better driving experience in the CRV hybrid. The last thing to mention is, you know, just the dimensions as well. So the CRV and the RAV4, they both took different approaches to how they designed the interior. The CRV focused on passenger space and the RAV4 focused on cargo space a little bit more. So you have more cargo space in the RAV4 than you get here in the CRV hybrid. Um, but the CRV has a bigger back seat than what you get with the RAV4. So it just comes down to which of those two things you prioritize the most. The Escape, uh, has less cargo and less passenger space than what you get in the CRV hybrid here. So um, the Escape's kind of the on the lower end of the scale as far as that goes. Um, so, but you know, if you do want a little bit more cargo space, maybe that would be one thing to draw you into the RAV4. But again, they're not huge differences either way you go. And so another reason why I just think, you know, the CRV, when you consider everything here, I think is my pick. If I had to, you know, have a, you know, a crossover in this segment, I would 100% probably pick one of these if I couldn't get my hands on a RAV4 Prime. I was still in love with that thing because it has, you know, 300 horsepower. All the electric range and stuff is super cool. But like I said, it's going to be next to impossible to even find one of those in the next year or two here. So in the meantime, I think the CRV Hybrid would be my pick as far as family crossovers go. I really love the way this thing drives. And like I said, it just feels comfortable. Every time I hopped in here, it was just like, ah, I'm home. Like I'm, I just, it's just a pleasant driving experience. Yes, it's not exciting. It's not going to, you know, uh, I guess give you a thrill or anything, but it's just such a good daily driver, family style vehicle that uh, I think it really has a little bit of a charm all of its own. And I really like this uh, sonic gray color you have here, which is new for 2020 as well. And a few other really bright colors um, kind of jazz it up a little bit as well. And you have a few exclusive things here for the hybrid version. I really like the push button gear shifter instead of the um, rattly little gear shifter you have in a regular CRV. The gauges here are a little bit cooler than you get in a regular CRV. Um, and so, yeah, all these things combine to make a vehicle that I really enjoy and just just, uh, yeah, I could see myself easily living with one of these things as a family hauler. Um, it just, it's a really nice feeling vehicle to drive. So I definitely recommend test driving one if you're curious. Uh, but huge thanks to Honda for providing me with the CRV Hybrid uh, to uh, spend a week with here for you guys. Let me know your thoughts on them in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.